Hello, everyone. Uh, well, welcome back. I hope you did have time to get a tea or coffee and a comfort break. Uh, welcome to uh, session one of the conference. Uh, I'm Glenn Lyons, as you hopefully heard in the plenary session, not McDonald Professor of Future Mobility at the University of the West of England, Bristol. Um, I'm really pleased to be chairing this session uh, in which we'll be discussing users' attitudes and mode choices towards transport. Each of our speakers will have around 10 minutes um, to give us their presentations. And then following the three presentations, uh, we'll have time for questions and answers at the end of the session. So do please uh, put your questions in the chat bar and we'll be gathering those up so that we can organize that conversation at the end of the session. We're going to be starting in a moment with Warsaw in Poland, where we'll hear about insights into changes in attitudes of transport systems users towards various aspects of public transport, both before and after significant changes have been made to the transport system. We then move to modelling of shopping behaviour in Liberia on the West African coast. And finally, staying in West Africa, we turn to Freetown in Sierra Leone and consider multimodal travel behaviours of students at the University of Sierra Leone. So, uh, as I've said, please pose your questions for our speakers in the chat bar. Uh, we'll come back to them once we've heard from all three of them. So, if I can turn to our first speaker, uh, and our first speaker is Dr. Wojciech Zimalski. Uh, Wojciech will be introducing the topic of factors that change attitude to public transport during major transport systems changes. And Wojciech, please um, do tee up your slides while I just finish your introduction. Um, Warshek is from the Institute for Sustainable Development Foundation in Warsaw, and he has a background in work on climate change and expertise in regional and spatial planning, as well as public participation. So without further ado, uh, Warshek, over to you. Thank you. And now yeah, I can show my screen. Wait a moment. Can you see the presentation or it's not? Yes, that's that's all good. Because I only see my presentation and I don't see any any more what's in the um, it's on your screens. Okay, uh, thank you for introducing me. Um, I'm as you see, I'm a wild male, a middle aged. So, <laughs> Glenn, I I uh, I was very. Uh, amazed with your presentation of a white male as well. Uh, I, I I hope I, I don't feel much comfortable here <laughs> because of this, but uh, let's start. Uh, yes, the title is very long, but uh, let's uh, skip that and go straight to the uh, idea of the research. In fact, the idea of the research is, to, is, is, is a try to explore why certain groups of transport users radicalize uh, in the discussions about the uh, changes of the transport systems uh, that we usually have not only in Warsaw but in many cities when we try for example to close certain streets for cars or reduce the cars use in some part of the city and maybe enlarge the use of public transport in the other parts of the city. Uh, the research data have been taken from the Warsaw Barometer. That's what I'm going to tell you later on. What's that? And the research group divisions is the second part of the presentation. And, and at the end, I will uh, show you some research results. Uh, <clears throat> and as a starting point for my uh, research, I, I, I concentrated myself on a period of time that is 2018 and 2019 in Warsaw when only one change uh, in the transport system occurred and this was a uh, change uh, in the north uh, eastern part of Warsaw uh, that is uh, uh, indicated here on the slide in the red uh, um, circle. Uh, the whole the whole picture is is Warsaw. This is a public transport system map, and and this this part 
uh, was um, uh, was where the changes occurred, and the changes was the uh, uh, start of the construction of the further second metro line, and these are three new uh, stations and important changes were that the streets that are marked here with uh, red uh, crosses have been closed uh, for the uh, car use. Uh, one of that is this Saint Vincent Street, uh, which is a little bit uh, low here, uh, which is an important connection. Sorry, let's go back. Um, Uh, which is an important connection between uh, the um, districts uh, north uh, of Warsaw and the city center. Uh, <clears throat> and these streets have been given mostly to uh, the public uh, transport. And you see it here on this uh, right hand side of the slide that uh, uh, public transport on the street is still going to be. Uh, active and a lot of buses have been directed to the street uh, to uh, go uh, for the currently last stop of uh, the second metro line that is Trotska and that is uh, uh, here in the um, orange um, on the map. And uh, to explore the uh, factors and, uh, and the reasons for the attitude change, I have used the Warsaw Barometer Survey. That is a, a very long survey since uh, 2003, uh, conducted by Warsaw City Hall and not really explored by any researchers yet. Uh, <clears throat> I mean explored in a way to dive more deeply than just a rough uh, um, results of uh, the answers to the questions and uh, uh, here I show you that I only used uh, uh, four uh, samples from the survey that uh, were um, done in June 2018, November 2018, June 2018 and November 2018 and in between of those samples we had uh, this change changes in transport system. The first change that is written here have been disclosure of the streets and given them more to the public transport. And the second change in the transport system that is described here is the opening of the uh, Trotska metro station with, uh, with, with some uh, adjustments in the bus system. Uh, <clears throat> so you see that uh, that the uh, most of the changes were rather in favor of public transport. <clears throat> and uh, to explore more the Warsaw Barometer Survey and the attitudes of the, of the Warsaw citizens in the vision of, the group of different groups of uh, transport users, I have done this division myself and proposed uh, to analyze the Warsaw Barometer uh, by the view of six groups which were only drivers, so the people who only use the car and so they indicated in the survey that they only use the car and last for the last three months of the survey because this is how the question is um, arranged that, that uh, the people interviewed are asked which type of uh, transport they were using for last three months. So uh, the only drivers then car users because car users are the group of people that were either drivers or car passengers and they didn't use any public transport. The car preferring group and those who prefer public transport are the ones that are mixed. Uh, they in car preferring group we've got more people that use the more frequently car in those who prefer public transport, we have more people that uh, we have people that usually use more public transport, but they also use a car. And then we've got uh, passengers of public transport 
and passengers of cars. So the people that do not drive a car, but they're usually passengers. And the public transport users are solely the group that uses public transport only. <coughs> And this brings quite interesting results uh, on many other things, not only this one that I show you, uh, but the result that I show you relates only to the quality of travel. There is a question about the quality of travel in Warsaw Barometer. And uh, this is an assessment done in a 10 grade scale <coughs> uh, where people simply uh, choose uh, numbers from 1 to 10, whether they are uh, <coughs> they uh, assess uh, um, uh, bad the travel with the public transport, which is 1, or good, which is 10, and in the middle, which are all the other numbers. And then we got a medium uh, uh, um, grade that I calculated, and you see that uh, usually the drivers uh, uh, assess public transport less uh, uh, favorably than public transport users. This is probably nothing new to anyone. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, you also see that uh, in these four samples that I chose, the uh, driver's opinion is uh, uh, less favorable with the time and the public transport user's opinion is more favorable with the time. Um, and this is where the, these uh, changes uh, have been taking place by favorable, uh, that were more favorable to public transport and with the extension of the metro line. <clears throat> and But you see what's the result of the, in the number of the people in each groups, uh, is that uh, people probably change the, the travel behavior because of these changes in transport system. Some people decided to use a, a car less, uh, use more public transport, but the other, on the other hand, some people decided because of these changes also to use public transport less and maybe a little bit more car. So in overall, people change their travel behavior into more flexible um, to adhere to these changes that were made. Uh, and I, that were simply making um, travel uh, in Warsaw a little bit more difficult at that time. Uh, but this is very, uh, this was quite, uh, I was quite curious uh, uh, why the, uh, some, some groups radicalized because of, of these changes. And you can see here that uh, the drivers as I previously said, are reducing the uh, assessment of the quality of travel. And uh, this is uh, probably because the number of people that uh, were um, active in this only drivers uh, group uh, was probably diminishing. So only the people that were really um, reluctant to change the way of travel into more flexible, stayed in this group and so they probably uh, had uh, uh, because and they stayed in this group probably because they had the least um, favorable uh, assessment of the quality of travel with the public transport from their point of view uh, and Jack, this is how you yes perhaps have one more minute please yes and this is the last uh, thing that i wanted to say thank you that uh, that this is probably one of the mechanism how the um, groups uh, that are further on taking part in some discussions about public transport changes uh, radicalize. Uh, and that's, that's all of my short research. As I said, there are much more results that can be shown, but we have only a few minutes here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul Jake, and we look forward to coming back um, to questions on that. Um, it would be fascinating, of course, to see how your graphs change as we look forwards through into and beyond the pandemic. Um, but I guess that's for another <coughs> project. Uh, so we now move on to uh, our second presentation, uh, which is from Amara Balak Masakoi, 
and Amara is going to be talking to us about statistical modelling of mode choice for shopping trips in the central business district of Painesville, Liberia. Um, but Amara is from the Transport Research and Education Centre at Kumasi at the uh, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, Ghana. Uh, he's a civil engineer, uh, specialist in road and transportation engineering. So without further ado, Amara, over to you. Hello, can you see my, my slide? Yes, all good, Amara. Yes, all very good. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amara, yes. Uh, could you click on the slide show next to the um, below? In presentation mode. There. So, exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is okay now, right? Yes, that's good. Please continue. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mark B. Mazekwe. I'll be presenting on statistical modeling of mode choice for shopping trips in the Central Business District of Pinesville, Liberia. The content of the presentation for today will be I'll be presenting the, pro the statement probably regarding to the topic and why. The, the identified gap that will fill up, the methodology used for these studies, the result key funding recommendations, and others. As we are aware, we know that the model of travel behavior generally in the world is a good tool used in all around the world to enhance effective transportation systems and help to improve uh, commuters' mobility. Furthermore, it helps to predict the number of trips that are directed to certain locations and help to reduce congestion. Due to this reason, most of the most of our transport researchers and others past uh, researchers they have presented so many literature when it comes to multiple models and their significance. But however, most of these studies are focused mainly on cent was centered around work trips and that of educational trips. Okay. During the course of this research, we are able to identify two major problems that the research gap, that the research filled this gap in terms of literature to contribute to the bodies of knowledge. One was we realized that there was limited literature on most trust for in developing countries, especially in the case of the central business districts. Due to this problem, we realized that in our country right now, at the present location, there's poor transportation planning system for a, Give uh, alarming there. So, due to this, this poor transportation problem, we realized that there's a huge level of congestion which has disturbed the traffic flow. And also, they also have degraded or deteriorated the infrastructure, the rural infrastructure before time. And also, there's part we have developed models, shopping models from all around the world, developed countries, other developing countries. But we realized that these models that are developed in other countries cannot be replicated in Liberia because the transport, the transport system there is different. The way people behave, traveler, commuters behavior is also different. And also the lifestyle of individuals is also different. So due to this gap, the research was carried out in order to identify the factor that influence people traveling behavior in terms of shopping trips in the central business districts and also to develop a model that predicts or explain the factor that contribute to this to this effect or this impact on the infrastructure. In order, in, in order to achieve this objective of the study or the aim of the studies, this, this methodology was adopted in terms of coming up with our final conclusion in terms of our results and come up with recommendation. An intense literature review was done. Existing literature was done. We reviewed existing literature from the for existing literature, we were able to identify some common factors that uh, influence traveler behavior for, shop, for shopping trips in other business districts in other countries. Coupled with the characteristics of the of the study area, coupled with the characteristics of the study area, we realize that we need to use a stated preference question in order to design to in order to collect our data for the study. So 
See the preference question that was used. Uh, we carry on the survey. Two set of data analysis occur. We, we do a, we did a descriptive statistics and also develop a model using linear regression. So after our data collection, after our data our collection and data analysis, we realized that we say okay, we did, we do we did a descriptive statistics. Like you see here, the trip purpose to understand the trip purpose are. The trip purpose, why it's still the same for previous research. We realized that in the change of prisoner district, we that 64% from the current studies, we realized 64% of the current trip survey was directed to shopping trips while working trip can accept. So this, this implies that this is contrary to previous studies from World Bank and having developed in 2008. In 2008, they mentioned that the work, working trip in the central prisoner district was the most uh, prevalent one. And it was quite insular. But as it is now, the trend of the data here, shopping trips seems to be the highest one. And of course, it's a serious point for the rural infrastructure and the way people move. Also, we, uh, we also try to understand the mode, the, the mode, this, the, the available mode within the area. Sorry, I, I might as well give me a problem there, sorry. So we realized from our data also the analyst, surprisingly, motorcycle reported the highest. And the reason this happened is because uh, we know that uh, the, the area is congested and then the, the passing maneuver of, of, uh, of vehicle is very difficult. So people tend to use motorcycle rather than using public transport. This also is also contrary to previous research by the World Bank in 2008, where public transport and private car reported the highest number. Furthermore, we also cross examine the trip purpose in terms of the motors to see how people motors they select and how does it affect the trip purpose and that of the age. So, as you can see from the bar chart above, motorcycle in all the trip purpose came as the highest. Similarly, we did it for us, we did it for each. And then we also realized that in, in terms of motorcycle usage, it was it was more popular among young age group. But when, when we got to people of higher ages, that's why the income level and other things, but it's still, they were still opting for using public transport and other best use, other best mode of transport that is safer and accessible to them. Similar and across Cross distribution were also done for for income for the income level. We realized that this which is obvious people with higher income tend to use private car and other mode of transport rather than motorcycle. And also for the travel distance, also did for travel distance. We also realized that as the travel distance decreases, people prefer to go for other mode of transport rather than motorcycle. So this implies that with with good system transport system for public transport and quality of service. More, more and more people will go for public transport and other mode of transport instead of motorcycle, which is not safer. Also, lastly, we, we were able to develop a model, a multinomial model for the studies. And the following conclusion, one key findings are due from the model. One was we realized that the income factor, like income, age, also location, education status was was. The significant factor, all that, but these are factors that are affecting people's travel behavior in, in the central business district. As compared to other studies that are done in other places where gender and other factor was prevalent in some of the models. But for in the case, in the case of the central business district, it, it, it's not that way. We also realize that the use of motorcycle is also it's on the increase. So we are hoping that stakeholders and other where uh, city corporation can see how best they can try to improve the system that will make people to shape from motorcycle who is not safe, who is, who is of course accessible, is easy to maneuver, is cheaper, but it's not okay for the sense of safety is not okay for the commuters. We also realize that the increase in income and income and education status will also lead to the disutility of public transport, like I said, from the, from the onset. And then also, we also know that the age and travel costs also maximization lead to private car use. So instead of we, we are trying to see how best we can promote public transport, that's the essence of the study also. So we are hoping that in the future, the final recommendation was made. 
we are we are hoping or we are we are hope we are hoping that in future because as it is when in the central based industry there's no formal labs or there's no parking facilities within the central based industry so the study we should recommend that the, the institution who is responsible for this stage should be able to, to be able to implement parking uh, all free parking facilities to stop to minimize the level of congestion and the number of random stops on the field, on the road. In the future, I want to say this the conclusion. In the future, if the service quality is improved and policy of public transport is improved, there's people will be waiting more and more to use the public transport system. But as it takes right now, the, as the current status right now, we are going through a lot when it comes to the public transport in our country. So Thank the you, following, following, sorry. If you could please conclude as soon as you can. Yes, yeah, this is the last slide, sorry. So the following, for the for, for the for the future research, I will wish that another research, the following research can come up and maybe increase the sample size of the data we use and then come up with all the funding. I will see whether there will be other additional significant parameters that will that affect in the visual travel mode in the central business district. I also and this thing, parking facility can be can be incorporated in the net travel and shopping trip behavior investigation to understand how the parking facility, the lack of parking facility in the area affect. Thank you very much for listening. That's great. Thank you very much, Mara. That was fascinating. Um, and I see we've had a question come in from the audience, which we'll come back to later. And I certainly have some questions of my own. Uh, so now we okay. turn to our third and final presentation from Simeon stevenson Uh Simeon's going to be talking us through MoChoice among public university students in Freetown, Sierra Leone. Simeon is also from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kimazi, Ghana. Uh, Simeon's a civil engineer who's just finished his master's degree in highways and transportation engineering but who also has qualifications in project supply chain and environmental management. Uh, with that, Simeon, over to you. Um, thank you. Simeon, your connection, at least at my end, is a little bit problematic. Perhaps um, your camera may be needed to turn off. Hello, please, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you good now, Simeon. Thank you. Please, can you hear me now? We we can hear you, Simeon, but it seems intermittent. Perhaps if you start your presentation, we'll let you know if it's still a problem. Simeon, can you hear us? Simeon? Yes, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can we can see your screen. Okay, if thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then my presentation will follow. Um, the University of Sierra Leone, um, which has been in existence for um, years, a Institute of Frabe College, um, Institute of Public Administration and Management, and College of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences. Um, for the past 11 years, that's right from 2010, there have been no on campus student accommodation at all. So, as a result of this, Almost all university students are these students and are seen to have actively evolved in using public modes of transportation. But in the past, the most common one used by the students have not been understood. This research therefore seeks to investigate, it therefore investigates the um, most common transport modes among students. And also we try to understand the factors 
that influence their modal decision. We also try to develop discrete outcome models of their travel decision. Um, to achieve, we selected three public colleges in Freetown. Um, these colleges are located in central and the far east end of the Freetown is the largest in marginal and it has the highest percentage of public universities, both private um, 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 and, and public. And it has an approximate land area of 82 square kilometers. According to the recent census in 2015, the population of the city stands at 1.5 million people. Um, we actually adopted the following research methodology. We first of all try to identify the research need. We design a survey sample using um, Cochrane's formula from it was assessed, updated, and the domain which we conducted. We analyzed it, we validated the model that we developed, and then we interpret and draw some meaningful conclusions. This choice to the students. Um, and then we adopted simple uh, sampling. Hello? Yes, we can just about hear you, Simeon. You may want to turn off your webcam while you're presenting, just to improve some bandwidth. Okay. Please, it's off, right? That's good, we can hear you. Okay. During the survey implementation, um, we presented um, its mood choice sets to the students. So, we have the parent transit mode, poda poda, motorbike, taxi, keke, and non motorized transport. And then the survey um, was conducted using simple random sampling in which um, each student from the three campuses has equal probability of being selected to participate. We use paper. self intervening system. Um, survey method. Overall, we received 29% responses online and then 71% paper-based. Um, the survey was conducted during the final semester exams of the students, so it lasted for about three weeks. Here are some of the statistical results we have. The sociodemographic features um, show that we have 54% male and 46% female. And then also the university population is relatively young in age, ranging from 18 to 35 years. We also realized that 68% of the students that provided us with their responses, we are pursuing their bachelor's degree at the university. In terms of modal share, it was revealed that um, the paratransit mode poda poda was highly used by the students, as we can see 46 percent of the responses. Also, majority of the students stayed at above five kilometers radius from campus and then among the students that stayed um, in less than one kilometer from campus are students coming from the College of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences. For students we are seen to stay at a distance of about more than five kilometers from campus. Also, in terms of the travel time, more than 40 minutes, majority of the students you know, spend more than 40 minutes traveling to campus since they stayed outside campus and then they stayed more than five kilometers from campus. And we also realized that among the students that stayed um, in less than one kilometer from campus, most of them use only 20 minutes about that to campus, since they are fully engaged in non-motorized means of um, travel. 
um, we use 20% of the data to carry out uh, 80% rather to carry out a model estimation. And we are able to develop five utility functions with this model. One each for Puda Puda, motorbike, um, taxi, keke, and non-motorized. The outcome of our analysis, here are some key research findings. We realized that Puda Puda has share and it was highly used by the students, followed by motorbike, taxi, keke, and non-motorized transport using um, cycling or walking. We also realized that um, characteristics of the built environment, trip characteristics, and social demography when they were making their modal choices. By modal share per campus, we realized that students coming from Fravi College are more into the taxi, student bus, and motorcycle, while students coming from Commerce and IPAM are engaged in the use of non-motorized transport. On average, students from Fravi College are coming from high income level families, at least 5 million units, which is about 500 United States dollars. Another key research students are more likely to um, use public transportation to get to school. Also, ageable students who may probably be pursuing their postgraduate courses are more inclined um, to the use of the new mode of transportation in the country, which is KK. So they are seen to work less and utilize more of public transportation. In terms of travel time, our research revealed that Students pay more attention to travel time than cost. But interestingly, um, this level of premium paid on travel time was kind of like different when you consider the paratransit mode, Poda Poda and KK. Here, the students prioritize travel distance and travel cost respectively. Um, another finding that we had from um, the attitudinal questions and modal preference we presented to the students, we realized that the students from the University of Sierra Leone are kind of heterogeneous when it comes to um, assessing the influence of mode choice on the environment and then their travel behavior. Um, with all our research findings, we prepared some recommendations for policy implication to our stakeholders and then university authorities, the governments as well. One of the key contribution of this research is our ability to carefully identify and quantify the factors that influence the mode choice of students traveling to the different campuses. Also, with our findings, we present university authorities and transportation officials with the need sustainable enough through the procurement of suitable travel modes for each of the three campuses. Another recommendation is to establish cycling and pedestrian pathways. This we think will kind of more especially when we realize that students coming from the College of Medicine and Allied Health Sciences are more inclined to walking and cycling. We also recommended that um, university authorities and transportation officials and kind of build more students' flats. This we think will create a society that will connect students and reach distances to college. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Simeon. Um, and we're very pleased that you managed to cope with a slightly difficult internet connection. I think we got almost 95% of the presentation, which was certainly enough for us to follow it. So thank you for that. Um, so we have a good amount of time now for some questions. Uh, encouragement again to our audience. Thank you for the questions you've already had. Do please continue to put some in the chat bar um, for our presenters. And can I perhaps invite all three presenters to turn on your cameras now? Um, and then we can we can turn to some questions. 
uh, and perhaps um, if we can stop sharing the screen for the moment, we can have a good view of us all. Um, what I'd like to do, perhaps just to give you this question initially, all three of you, but when you're responding to other questions, you may like to comment on this. Of course, the, the, the joint approach to this event means that we are very mindful of um, gender and diversity across the whole event. And I just wondered how conscious the three of you were of gender during the course of your research. Um, I don't know if anyone would like to immediately answer that or if you'd like some time to think while we come to some other questions. Anyone who'd like to react straight away? Yes, please, over to you, Wojciech. Oh, yeah, we, we can't hear you at the moment. Wojciech, did you want to come in? Okay, so we have a an audio problem, I think. Uh, probably oh, thank you. Would it... thank you. <laughs> the organizer okay. needed to unmute me. Um, Excuse me, Amara, could you also turn your camera on, please, so that uh, we have all of you on the, on the screen? Thank you for it. Thank you. Yeah, Amara, yeah. that would be great to see you and over you to watch. Thank you. Just shortly. Uh, frankly speaking, I haven't been exploring yet the gender in this was of biometric studies. However, I got some data, but uh, I only tried the data about the age of the people. That is also some, some sort of uh, irregularity there. The older people usually use different type of transport than the younger ones and things like that. But, but I haven't been exploring yet the gender here. However, there is a potential to do it. Thank you. Um, Simeon, I don't know whether for you also, you of course gave us some results concerning uh, gender, but um, perhaps not so much cross-sectional analysis. Um, do you imagine there might be more to learn from your data, from your survey regarding gender differences? Um, I, yes, correct. Sorry, is that specific for me? For me, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, for Simeon, please. Uh, yes, um, actually, we try to understand, first of all, the population, the students' population from the University of Sierra Leone, um, which has like um, three, three we know, and then it's very obvious is that uh, we don't have much fish in Hello? Okay. Have... And that's why even. Hello? Hello? Sorry, Simeon, we've, we've lost connection a little bit with you there. Um... Hello? Oh, hello. Is that Amara? Yes, Amara. Hi, Amara. We can't see you on camera, but perhaps you're okay with audio. Um, is there anything you would like to say in terms of how conscious you were in your work of? gender differences? Uh, yeah, there, there is huge gender disparity when it comes to the transport sector in our country. Yeah, so I think there's a need that these studies be carried out in our country to help at least balance the, the, gender, the gender equality. But as it is now in our country, especially for public transport, there is huge gender disparity. Yeah, yeah, it seems, I mean, I was interested with your focus on um, the high proportion of shopping trips. First of all, okay. I think the notion of what shopping really means, I'm very aware that if much of it is by motorcycle, it probably reminds us that many of us in the global north don't have a clear, a good understanding of the shopping context and the meaning of shopping. Perhaps you could say a little bit more on that? Well, yeah, the, shop, the shopping context in our, in our in my, in my area, it's, it's, gen, it's almost like a general case where people go and get uh, go and get some grocery and other things for, for weekends, for normal days, from supermarket and other places. That's uh, what they usually do. So, but during that course of the time, there are other people who do businesses, who go for shopping for other purposes. So, but due to the congestion level, so in our country, motorcycle is the most prevalent in our country. It's, it's actually surprising, but 
is a legal system is a legal form of transport system in our country and and just from your data um could you give us some insight about how commonly motorcycles are ridden by women for shopping as opposed to men oh yeah yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the males mostly most of the time use motorcycle female always feel that the motorcycle is not safe in that instant for the data the data are collected so as it is the male is more than the female that use the motorcycle in terms of proportion okay um most and... male most females use uh, sorry most females use public transport what are the motorcycles? Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah. can, can I just, there's a particular question from the audience for you as well, Amara, um, which hopefully you will have your slides in front of you to address, but um, the person asks, what is the real percentage of private car trips to the CBD? Um, is it 35.7 or less, as the picture suggests? So is is that the a proportion of car trips is just around a third, or is that is it higher than that? I'm assuming at the moment there's thinking time, Amara, but let me know if you need the question again. Okay, perhaps. Perhaps we have lost Amara, um, in which case we did have another specific question for you, Simeon. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about what a podder podder is for those of us less familiar uh, with Sierra Leone's transport system? Hello, hello, Glenn. Please, I lost you before now. Oh, sorry. Could you tell us a little bit more about what a podder podder is? Someone asks in the audience. What podder podder? Yes, please. Yeah, um, podder podder is um, one of the public or commercial transport uh, vehicles we have in Sierra Leone. And um, it's a kind of like a paratransit mode that takes up to about eight passengers. and it's the most commonly used mode of transportation in our country so it wasn't surprising at all when uh, revealed that it has the highest percentage of um, um of road users okay um and could you just say a little bit about how it works compared to other types of bus um mustafa Ayman asks. Okay, um, the the poda poda is kind of okay. when you see it at first sight, is anything like a minibus? Well, it isn't. Poda is medium in size, a bit smaller, so it's it's commonly used by students, public transport users. And majority of the Sierra Leonean population. Um, like in, in, in Ghana, this mode of transportation is being referred to as structural. So if and then they are of the same vehicle. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think that's been been useful for our audience, having a bit more of a sense of um the landscape of mobility um in, in Sierra Leone. Um so if I could um, come across to you, uh, Walsh Jack, uh, I was particularly interesting because, of course, you had a dynamic dimension to your um, your research with the before and after study. Um, to what extent do you think those changes have stabilised, or would you anticipate there being a continued change in attitude and behaviour towards public transport? Uh, thanks for that question. Uh, well, uh, the, 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 my research stopped at the end of 2019, so there was a COVID afterwards. So uh, in 2020, there was only one survey, and it really wasn't the successful one. I mean, 
neither to end continue because everything changed in Poland uh, con uh, in public transport. But this, what has been at the end of 2019, was uh, was uh, was uh, was an end of a big trend from the past of the rising uh, higher uh, uh, quality uh, um, assessment of the public transport in Warsaw. And if if I um, if I understood correctly, my, the your data seemed to suggest that after introducing the improved public transport services, the perception from car drivers about public transport went down. Is that yes. correct? Yes, that's correct. But but what I uh, here um, explain is it is because the number of drivers that were asked for that diminished and and probably because of the construction of the of the survey is that simply the number of drivers uh, as a percentage of the people in Warsaw probably also diminished. So that's why this group and the people who left driving a car only probably were sharing more critical attitude to the public transport. And the people that uh, were not so critical probably moved more towards public transport because it became better. That's, that's my assumption a little bit from the data that I have. Okay, so there's a not only a dynamic in behavior, but individuals have perhaps moved between your different groups uh, in your analysis. Yes. Which is another challenging dynamic. Um, yeah, thank you for that. Um, and do you think that is the Warsaw Barometer uh, a consistent set of questions that's conducted annually? And do you, will those questions continue through and beyond now the pandemic? so that perhaps you'll be able to return to this analysis again in the future? I, mm, I hope so. As I said, there was only one instead of two uh, surveys in 2020. And uh, I haven't yet updated myself about 2021, but I hope there were surveys as well. And probably the, resu the results of the first survey should be, should be ready now or should be announced quite soon if they were taken, because uh, I observed that, uh, unfortunately, this uh, research was somehow not, not well seen by the, by the, by the government of, of Warsaw, by the local authorities, and was not well exploited and not well, uh, well, the, not well maintained, let's say, okay. And perhaps, I don't know, maybe a suggestion coming from this conference is that uh, a gender equality audit um, of that uh, Warsaw barometer might be a useful exercise for someone to do um, without having seen it. I don't know, of course, um, the questions that were asked. But yeah, that was fascinating. Um, Amara, are you still with us or? Do we have Amara still with us? I'm not sure we do. Um, I was interested in his views on the stated preference approach and his methodology, but perhaps we'll have to leave that. Um, Simeon, I know it wasn't directly to do with your own analysis, but I was very taken with your mentioning that there's no student accommodation on campus. Um, are, you, are you familiar enough with that to tell us a little more about the the situation because one could imagine that would be an alternative solution of course rather than a transport one to students being able to safely access um, the campus facilities and for their education Simeon I'm not sure whether or not you're with us um, hello sorry Glenn I think I seem to be struggling with them with the internet. <laughs> could you please uh, repeat the question? Of course, yes. I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about the situation with the universities in terms of there not being accommodation for students on the campus. Is that something that's considered in terms of forward plans to help with students accessing the campus? 
Um, basically, the, the challenge with the university accommodation, as I mentioned in um, the presentation, this one started right in 2010. You know, before then, there were student accommodation, but the university authorities and government were faced with uh, the challenge in the structure. The structures were not in good order to accommodate students. So for quite 10 to 11 years, this has been a challenge. Well, I may not want to politicize it, but it's like it was in that direction. So everything was like on that standstill position. And most surprisingly, um, student accommodation fee was not embedded in the tuition fee. So when you receive your acceptance letter from the university, you apply separately. issues of maintaining the hostels, issues of administration, we are all put together that have affected um, students' accommodation on campus. But with this academic year, there is a project called Badia Project. We have new student hostels and even some lecturers' flats. So I think with 2022-2023 academic year, the issue of students being this student will be over. And most of our students will now be accommodated on campus and they'll be provided with the lecture and the flexibility of enjoying on-campus life. Fantastic, that's good to hear. Yes, thanks, Simeon. Well, I'm conscious um, our time is almost up. Um, I think this session has been a really powerful illustration of a number of wicked problems as we were hearing about in the plenary session. Um, the, the, the challenges of understanding travel behaviour uh, in all their dimensions, not just the matters of gender. Um, the, the world of digital connectivity that we're in, um, which as we discover all of us from time to time, like Simeon today, can be a challenge. But of course also the, the consequences of the pandemic, both in terms of how that's affected our ability to understand behaviour change with our data, um, but the challenges we face societally moving forwards. So um, I'm sure virtually our audience will be joining me at this point in wanting um, to thank Simeon Wojcik and Amara for their presentations. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been very interesting uh, and we wish you luck with your ongoing research and career developments. Thank you all.